Welcome to the Out the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Oh, I'm Richard. And I'm Ashley. <laughs> That's my favorite part about when we record with you guys is we get to you and you're like, wait, which one of us is going first? <laughs> Somebody say something quick. Um, it's fine. I, I can cut out the gap. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Uh I would say tonight, but it's tonight for you guys. It's early afternoon for me and Ross. Uh, As always, we are socially distant. It's literally the only way we can do the show. Uh, I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. And Richard and Ashley are in Spain. Correct. Northern Spain. Yeah. Normally, this is a very international show with you guys, but normally you're just up in Canada. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not. (laughs) Yeah, we're finally (laughs) able to travel again. So we're making good good use Canada um, is hardly international compared to what you guys have done over the last, <laughs> since we spoke last. So, that's fair. Yeah. Looking forward to uh, getting into that. So Ross, I don't think we need to do your update yet because no, we I'm just, barely I'll say, talked about it last night. I'll say the phrase that came to mind after driving the car today, uh, the Nissan okay. Altima press car. Um, Altima. That was a bad <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made myself laugh so hard going to drop my daughter off at daycare this morning when I said that out loud and I can just see her in the mirror looking at me like, the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> oh, you just reminded me of, I have to go back and find this Instagram <laughs> reel of this dad who decides to use their golf cart to drop their kid off at school instead of getting in their actual vehicle. And oh. by the time he's back at the house... She's like, there's already comments on the Facebook page. Who's this guy cut the line? And I was like, he solved the system. He cut the line. Like, why are you mad about it? You're just mad because you didn't think of it. Like, he cracked the code, except if I tried to crack that code here, I would get arrested. Well, if you drove an Altima on the sidewalk, yeah, that would definitely be bad. That also that. I meant more like the, the, you know, city here is not friendly to golf carts the way some of those cities. What is that town? Is it like Tennessee or Georgia where like 90 something percent of the people just do their daily everything in golf carts. I would say pick a town and or like, you could probably pick a state and find a community per state. Yeah. Florida's definitely high on the list for Look sure. Look for the golf. Look for the old white people. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so, Chris, do you have any updates since we recorded? No. Uh, I, a, since we've recorded, I have not had to attend a, a youth sporting event, but oh, that's because none of them have happened yet. I'm pretty sure my oldest is at football <laughs> practice right now. Um, but he drives himself now. And so I don't have to go to those. Uh, the only other thing is we kind of started talking about tires last night on the last show mm-hmm. and we have definitely kept yeah. talking about tire sort. So okay. I, I still need to email, uh, Roger about the wear that we've been seeing. Mm-hmm. I put 46,000 miles, uh, on a set of tires and on two, on two over the- the the Vredestein pins the right. Two of them are the full forty six thousand. Forty six. Two of them have what do we say thirty thirty eight or something. Yeah, it it's pretty high up there. Um, but in all of that, it's just been it's been a lot, and so yep. we're gonna we're gonna make some adjustments. We're talking to some people. Hopefully that'll yep. go well. I told you I was gonna hit the ground running with emails this morning, and I yeah, you did. I was <laughs> like, Ross, I'm not so. ready for extra emails. It's work time. What are you doing? I, <laughs> uh, well, in the wee hours before people actually start doing work it's easy to shoot off an email to an old friend so yeah we'll see how that yeah. pans out and then, and we found out he got promoted so <laughs> motorsports from PR yeah. motorsports what a gig it's like we all would like that change right um, uh, yeah so that's my only update so cool. we're back to welcoming Richard and Ashley back to the show again yep. Thank you for, Thank having, you for us. having us. Either we're actually, show number we're actually, four or no, five I, with maybe. you guys. Yeah. Time flies. I thought I thought I put it in as three, but could I could be, be wrong. Let's go with three. Unless, unless it's YouTube lies. Three. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with a number that's more than two and less than six. We definitely know it's more than two. <laughs> we, we, we've established that. Because there was, there was a cabin in like Calgary. Mm-hmm. Ah, where, there was yeah. a, where there was like a raven outside the entire time like a, squawking at us <laughs> and one of the was trucks was house. one oh. of the trucks was still in Colorado but you were in Calgary at that point 
Yeah. It was there, an Airbnb tiny house. There was I a, remember that. It was, it was a Best Western Hotel when Air Canada <gasps> yes. lost their luggage. <laughs> yes. And wasn't yeah. there one? Was there one in the other Airbnb in Calgary? I'm not. I don't remember. But a, what? Yeah. We were just what bouncing. This is the closest thing to being in our own home that we've ever done in podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, because you're in the truck. Yeah. It's it's truck it's stage yeah. for the audio listener. Um, Richard and Ashley are sitting in what from here doesn't look like much, but why don't you tell us where you're sitting and what you're sitting in? Yeah. So we are in our, that's uh, an, oh, well, we have a truck and camper. We have our Toyota Tundra, 2008 Toyota Tundra and a Overland Explorer vehicles, Alpine flatbed camper. And we are in Spain currently traveling through Europe in it. Ooh. Yeah, we don't. We have a general idea where we're heading next, which would be south. Um, but then eventually, probably north, but north, then and then east. east. <laughs> so, and possibly at some point west. <laughs> exactly. So, so we, let's get all the directions. Yeah, there we go. Good, nice. thing, good thing I posted updates. Yeah, so, thank you. You, <laughs> you can see, yeah, 2008 Toyota Tundra with a Mitz alloy flatbed. And then, yeah, the Overland Explorer vehicles, Alpine Camper. And we've had this set up for a year now, I believe. Mm -hmm. Maybe spent yeah. eight, eight months in it um, in between jobs where we've had to fly away. But yeah, I think mm -hmm. in, Or it's been shipping. Or it's been shipping. So we shipped yes. it from, yeah, Galveston, Texas, because it was closer to drive to Texas than it was to drive to Halifax from where we were right. in, Calgary. in Calgary, which is mind blowing. We talked about Canada's that. a big place. Yeah, sure we talked is. about that on a prior show. The, the confines of the vehicle you were looking for is that it had to fit in the container. Yeah, we skipped Go. that. <laughs> yes. and, eventually, and then eventually just shipped it roll on, roll off. Oh, yeah. okay. Did uh, yeah. did did the Tundra sustain any damage in the no, it process? Was, None. It was wow. great. Super easy. Very yeah, easy. Out of Texas and into Southampton, England. Hmm. Um, we did that March 20 or March this year. Yeah. Yes. And then we spent, the truck was in the United Kingdom for six months. So we had a full six month uh, temporary import permit, uh, which we ourselves spent four months in England and Scotland. Um, two months in between or something in the middle of there, we flew down for an expedition overland trip in Africa. So we went to mm -hmm. South Africa, Botswana and Namibia to work, to film and photograph and actually planned the entire thing and navigated for, for that trip. Right. So I didn't a, plan the entire thing. <laughs> you were involved in much of the planning. Yeah, and exactly. And the navigation. Yeah, and then two weeks ago, we, well, flew back to Scotland, picked up the truck. So in sep beginning of September. Yep, drove yeah. south okay. to the bottom of England and shipped from Plymouth to Santander in Spain. On a ferry. On a ferry. An overnight ferry. And then we've been here That's for a couple cool. weeks in Spain. Wow. So you've spent more time in the Eastern Hemisphere than the Western. Correct. At least over the last six months, if not yeah. a whole year. That's yeah. yeah so that's so when you're bad. talking about sending emails uh, before anybody else is, uh, is up or, or working, we do that all yeah. the time now. It's great. <laughs> yeah, we're like, how do, you, how do you like all these emails at 3 a.m.? <laughs> Of a new relationship with time. Over well, there. all of your, yeah. all of our communications were normal hours. Like it was, we were good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great, well, and, it, and it's nice that there's a good, there's an overlap, nice amount of overlap between yeah. Us. Yeah. between North America and us. So yeah. it works out. Well, that's our Ross and I. Our sure. Hooniverse uh, coworker is down in Australia, so he's always a day ahead, minus seven hours, and so like mm -hmm. his. His communications are hilarious because normally when we record with him, we're recording at like eight. I record eight p.m. my time. He's a whole day ahead at like his lunch break is when yeah. he's hanging out with us. So yeah, we're yep. we're used to that. And my wife works in international logistics, so about ten p.m. here means all of Asia is now awake and starting to pummel her with emails. So like mm -hmm. our phones ding at night. So we're we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So I'm a big fan of the focus. Uh, setting on that yes <laughs> sleep matters yeah <laughs> international time stuff too what time is it where this person is i probably shouldn't call him now or fuck him i'm gonna call him anyways <laughs> <laughs> who do you want to talk to that much <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, currently, nobody. So, so <laughs> I'm I'm curious because like we always think about North America being like so open, and that's normally what you hear about about like Europeans coming this way to to explore the American West. Mm-hmm. Like, have you guys run into any issues in the UK and Scotland versus like things being more compact, or how does that work for you? Oh yeah. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Yep. Like smaller area, more people. It's not as easy to just go out to BLM land and camp. That's not really a thing. Um, In Spain, I think they're pretty tight with um, specific parking areas for motorhomes only. And you can't look like you're Mm -hmm. camping. You have to look like you're you're just parked. So I don't know that this camper would work. Yeah. And we're talking about, that's for free up. camping. Huh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like yeah. in a big kind of lot. Um, yeah. But we've been managing. Yeah. There was pretty well. I, I think, think, I think when we England first was the hardest. Yeah. When we first got to England driving on the left-hand side of the road in a full-size truck, left-hand it, drive, full-size left, truck. Yeah. It, it's not a big deal because there are sprinter vans everywhere and every sprinter is the same width as the top. Okay. And, and we never got into a situation where we're like, oh, we can't fit. I'm sure if we tried to, in some areas in the south in Cornwall, we've heard it's really yeah, right. tight, but yeah. it was all good. But That's it been... was stressful yeah, to drive there. Yeah, I think, so the roads are narrow and all these winding roads have a speed limit of 60 miles an hour where they would be like 30 miles an hour back home. Really? Mm-hmm. So I'm most just trying to go fast enough so that I can either not annoy the people behind me or find a spot to pull over in time so that I don't have a big pile of people behind me. But they do have pullouts, like pullout areas where you can pull mm-hmm. over and people are actually like really I nice. never got honked at Really? Once. Yeah, so, nobody huh. nobody was rage raging and angry. Everybody's like mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody hits the hazards <laughs> as a thank you. You know. When they pass. It's like uh that's like the, the mountains like in the San Francisco area. Up in the hills there between the bay and the ocean, there's yeah. pullouts and people are generally like, oh, this person is moving faster than me. Or this person's local. They know this road and can yeah. you know, drive a Honda Fit at twice the speed of me in a rental Camaro. <laughs> like, yeah. So you yeah. didn't have any of those those top gear, like induced comedy moments where you're like, uh, very big truck, very small civilization here. Like I'm about to take out a 1400s house. None of those. <laughs> no, it was it was pretty good. And I think, yeah, I, I don't remember if I said this last time, but our friend Dan from Malamish, um on Instagram, they've got a like four by four Sprinter that they drive everywhere. And they spend a lot of time in, in the UK and in Europe and in Europe. Really. And the way that he explained it was he's like beer gets delivered in Sprinter vans. And if I'm going somewhere where they don't deliver beer, I don't want to actually go. There. <laughs> so. That is a, a, certainly a great way, an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. So, yeah, we didn't, have, I don't wow. think we, I don't think there were too many places where we decided not to go because because the, the mm-hmm. truck size was too big or anything. But it's No, been... I feel like green laning, though, we had opted out of. That's like a um, specific kind of off-road pursuit in the UK where you can go on trails that are mm-hmm. yeah, mud or dirt or whatever. Narrow but I, two tracks. Yeah, but, but we they're... didn't know if we'd be too wide and we just kind of didn't do it. But I, you can. They're so. mostly built around series Land Rovers or Defenders. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, okay. the farmer's going to build it. That build is rock wall just wide enough <laughs> so his Defender can go through there. Right. And at that point, that's the limit. Yep. No uh, yeah. easy way to create no trespassing exactly Mm. so this sounds like the opposite issue or not issue but opposite experience from the trip that the two of you attended with the overland crew um yeah especially iceland where it's just vast and open so you've been pinballing all over that area yeah so how does uh your current adventure tie into that or or not um i think that like so first of all spain has been a lot more wide open than i've expect i expected it to be yeah and i think the other thing is that the terrain and the scenery changes a lot in a very short time period yeah um so you don't have to drive very far for things to be very different whereas when we were in 
like South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, the distances were much further that we did. And mm. the w- roads were a lot wider and the camping was a lot different there, actually. You know, I think there was, it was a little more flexible or if you did want to stay at a campground, there were really, you know, nice ones, but there were also really simple ones. And those were the ones I liked the best when they just had a flush toilet in the middle of nowhere, which I still am amazed Whoa. by. Yeah. yeah. Really? And just, um, like a donkey boiler. We just don't know where it flushes to. I know. That's the ask. thing. You're like, where does that go to? <laughs> Underground. Um, like a septic field-ish. <laughs> or a pit. Yeah. yeah. I guess we could have asked. But yeah, anyways. And um, like relatively inexpensive. Are quite inexpensive some of them yeah and it's just like mm-hmm. a little toilet flush and a donkey boiler shower yeah which you can explain yeah so do- what that is and, if you want. and they were doing words like words i've never heard before yeah so <laughs> so and the neat thing was like the campsites were pretty big so they're mostly like what i guess we would call like a group campsite back home and each campsite it's very had a specific bathroom like a toilet to itself for the camp and then uh, Maybe a and a donkey boiler as well. And the donkey boiler was essentially a big 45 gallon drum that had a had water piped in and water piped out that you could build a fire underneath and heat it up and have oh. hot water that you made yourself with the fire that was heating this hot this drum of. And of then the showers water. were all open air, so you'd just be like looking out oh, and sunset and your gin and tonic <laughs> on the lead and. Just- Washing your hair, mm. or stars are out. Oh, it's so serious work. It sounds like <laughs> it sounds perfect. <laughs> that's an experience. Yeah. yeah, that's an experience. Yeah, and and like there were times where what was it? Eight. We went eight hundred kilometers between fuel stops because we were just out so far. Oh yeah, on that one track in northern Namibia. And what is that in? Yeah, so it's a it was a big big change, which was very welcome after being in Scotland for so long. It was just nice. It was just different, yeah. Nice to see it was a different, different challenge. So, are you doing math, Ross? That's yeah, five hundred miles. <laughs> say it's a lot. Yeah, that's just, so that's all I'm under doing that. between field Google stops. Is doing that. And and I would I would say maybe a quarter of that was low range. Oh, so, what? Wow. So yeah. all so, dirt on that low range with a Sequoia that got eleven miles per gallon. So wait, that was the that was the new white one, right? And that thing mm-hmm. only got 11? How, how was that? So, yeah, it was. So part of that is that it was towing a trailer. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's not, wasn't the most fuel efficient thing. Um, yeah. It I had just power. Put, but it had a lot. It was, a, <laughs> it was the hybrid. So yeah. it, it puts the same power out. It's like the same power output as like supercharged 5.7 liter V8. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's fun to drive. And it, maybe that's part of the problem of the fuel economy. <laughs> Probably. Also, it weighs a lot because yeah. of all that. So we took the stuff. trailer off for one section of dunes. We did a dune section in Namibia um, by the Skeleton Sorry. Coast. And yeah, that thing was a monster in that section. It was cool. It was so so light. Everybody's bags were out. No trailer. It was like, I'm liberated. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You unhook the trailer and it's like... It's like going from the, um, I don't know if you ever played baseball or softball or anything, but you have the weights on the bat and you swing the bat with the weights on it and mm-hmm. take the weights off. And then you're like, I, I have all this superpower strength. You know? oh, yeah. And then you ground out the second. Um, if you're yeah. lucky. In my case, it was just strike out. So we can just go like that. Um, yeah, no, I, I just put like 700 something miles on a new Tundra TRD Pro. Yeah. So yeah, had the same experience. Like, I wasn't towing a trailer, and obviously, I wasn't doing low range in in you know coastal Africa. Um, but yeah, that thing is punchy. Yeah, which was nice because all the extra power came with a bunch of extra weight, which is not nice. Um, speaking of tundras, how mm-hmm. has yours been? Ours has been great. It gets the same fuel economy as a hybrid Sequoia. <laughs> It has a house on the back. It's actually a little bit better. We're kind of like, we kind of hover around like 12 and a half miles per gallon. Which that is wild to me that they spent all this time and energy and money to develop a new powertrain to get the same fuel economy. (laughs) 
Yeah. They and... said, just to be clear, Toyota said they developed this powertrain for power, not for fuel economy. Cool. Cool. Tick. Just putting it out there. Not to defend my homies, but that's uh, that, that's word for yeah. word almost. No, I I would I accept more power. I have no problem with that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think the truck. thing with with our Tundra is that um, we've had it for a while, not with the camper on it, but this experience has been like a trust a trust building experience with it. Yes. You know the little like when we took our red truck to South America. I think you trusted it to a certain extent, but you gain trust over time. And so we're in like the trust building section of this trip with <laughs> yeah. the vehicle. I feel pretty good Don't now. Cross I, me. I, I, yeah. I, I think, <laughs> yeah. So I think the biggest yeah. part was that uh so a big so I regeared it to five two so it's got five two nine gears in it now. Oh, and yeah. the so that that helps. Um a bit. but the first set of gears didn't really go in well and they were making noise and deceleration like and like as soon as i picked oh, up the truck and i was like this is not good we gotta redo this truck. so then those got redone by another shop and well they got redone twice oh, sorry done at the first redone twice at the first shop and then they still weren't right so i was like okay if you can't do it two times you can't do likely won't be able to get it on a third try uh -huh. so i went to another shop and it sounded great and everything was they were working well but then when we did the rear wheel bearings like a preventative maintenance rear wheel bearings mm -hmm. on the truck now it has all the weight uh we were taking yeah took the gear oil out and it was just sparkly just like a glitter bomb oh. and realized that the pinion bearing had not been uh the preload was a little bit off on that so then uh when we were we were on our way south at that point so we had dark horse uh, customs in Bozeman, Montana, redo it a third or four, fourth, fourth time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, yeah, that was like we delayed shipping at that point. We had it booked and then we oh. had to re like reschedule it. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was I'm sure a that lot. Steam so, yeah. line was very understanding. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, but so, but that, so that for first of a while, I was, I was just constant, like, I'm always very i'm just constantly listening listening what's making noise but what's then especially af after after that before. yeah i'm like especially after that i'm like what's that noise i'm like oh that's just the road it's just the road. change now oh what's that it's like okay. asphalt different changed or like tire pressure is a little bit different than what it was before i think the thing is too we're not used to carrying around a Don't. shell on our back that is this house like yeah as well it's like a and kindergartner so takes... wearing a full-size backpack <laughs> right and i have one of those right now i completely got that reference <laughs> yeah so, and you're always like what can we get out of this backpack like what we can can we take out what's the heaviest right. can we get rid of this thermos like immediately mm -hmm. Wait um, so we've been yeah. doing that yeah um, so from the beginning but that's very very understandable about being in the trust building phase especially after how many miles and how many adventures you've done with the red truck and with, you know, I know that feeling of like, that sound is not the right sound for this vehicle to make, like in your heart sinks. Um, do you think that you have gotten to the like, and you're probably familiar with this, like the solidified relationship with a vehicle because you've done something above the normal confines of mm. its existence. It gets better every day. I don't okay. think, so. I don't think so because we've, so in in the UK, we hadn't done a lot of off pavement driving. And so um, that's one test that needs to be done with it if we're going to mm -hmm. take it to where we want to take it. So we've started doing that in Spain. Yeah. So it'll just it's a constant... continue to happen over time. Yeah. It's and better it than it was. It. Yeah. And it was fun because <laughs> we, we didn't really do anything with this truck in Canada. We just put it together and left. Mm -hmm. so it's been nice to be able to make changes make changes along the way and kind of like improve like just suspension settings or like adjusting bump stops to make sure that things are you know sitting where they're supposed to sit and stuff so it's, it's good. kind of like still in the testing phase but to be fair it's been great and I oh the living space is <laughs> how amazing. has uh, 
Yeah. How has so living out of a tiny house tundra been? Uh, it's been so good. It's been really good. I, yeah. When we were so we were hiking this morning, and kind of talking about the show notes, and we're like, "How long have we been in this thing? We've, only, <laughs> we've had a year already, and the time just flew by." So we probably spent eight months in the truck itself, or oh wow, yeah. seven eight months in the camper, and yeah, I don't know. Is it, I, I would say I'm going to share okay. what I think is an interior shot I'm of your guys' by. camper. That's yeah. If it, about if it matches, is that matches, about right? Honestly, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Mm, no, that's no. not it. That's not it. That's a different oh, one. Oh. It's similar. So that's the HBE okay. model, the side entry model. And I like that model a lot. I like it better, mm. but um, it also weighs three hundred and fifty pounds more than this one. Which so. model was yours? It's the Alpine. The Alpine. How... But the dinette is very spacious. Um, the bed's very comfortable. We have more storage than we need. Yeah. Uh, problem. Well, that can always turn into a bad problem. When yeah. You yeah. So, back. Well, yeah. So I, I removed the rear pullout drawer from the fl Mitt's flatbed. Um, cause it was 210 pounds. And I'm like, the drawer I, itself I, was 210 drawer pounds. Itself. Holy and shit. I and it was still a light, like a pretty light setup otherwise. Yeah. But... And but that, that I, they're just yeah. like huge drawer slides and all the all the pieces that make that work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's yep, yeah, that's the one. Um, but yeah, and then, so I eliminated space there. And then what else? Yeah, there's nothing really stored in the in the flatbed um, compartments. Just like that's where the garbage and recycling goes. So that mm -hmm. helps cut down weight. I removed the back seat out of the truck and I put the spare tire in the back seat to remove. 90 pounds off the really, really far back right. of the, uh, Hanging off the back. That's smart. Uh, yep. So that helps put a lithium starting battery from anti-gravity in the truck. And that saved 55 pounds. It's, it's yeah. saved 55 pounds. Yeah. It weighs 15, 17 pounds, something like that. Oh my God. Yeah, truck, truck batteries oh, yeah. are heavy, That's... Ross. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. trust me. I, I know I've, yeah. I've held my fair share, but 55, if a normal battery is what? 70. Yeah. How much did you say yeah, the lithium so, weighs? Yeah, if it's 15 or 16 pounds, it's that's light. Crazy. Okay. That's yeah. Crazy. And then how I just. How close are you to, uh, to payload with. I, or it kind of depends. So. How I put a are 40, you in most I, I put a 46 gallon. So I, the thing weighs like 70, 800 pounds when not everything is in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of hovers. But if I want to keep it light, we just don't bring a lot of water and I don't fill the 46 gallon tank up all the way. God. And then if we want to be, if we're going out a long distance, we just top up. Okay. But, and there's some stuff I think we've eliminated. Like we just keep eliminating things that we're realizing mm -hmm. we're not using. Yeah. Um, but I'm also collecting a lot of books. And so those will be at oh, some man. point, those will, once I get those yeah. back to Canada, that it'll help with the weight quite I, a bit. Yeah. I look at my bookshelf, which is about four feet from my desk every single day. And every single day, I remember that my least favorite thing about moving is packing and moving books. Yeah. And I'm like, so but I can't get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's you know? super easy. You just start giving them to the kids. They ruin them. <laughs> my, 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 child, <laughs> my child pretends to so read, but she just points at pictures and goes, Baba? And that's the whole reading entity at this point. So um, have you had any interesting, obviously in, in Spain and in uh, in the UK and whatnot, um, a Tundra with a camper on the back is not the normal vehicle on the streets there. Had any no. interesting interactions from people who are like, the hell is that doing here? A little bit of that. Most people are pumped. and Very pumped. Yeah. And they're just like, how did you get this here? Did you most a lot of people have asked, have we driven here? I'm like, I don't know what you mean by that. that From Canada. Uh, can, how'd you, can you how'd you get you that, drove? I think, that back and think about that. I, I think they mean did you ship yeah. it here yeah. and then whatever? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Does it have uh, Canadian plates on it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. How's so it? then and it's got a Cana a stick well, Canadian flag on the back and a sticker that says C A or C A N. Yeah. Just to dig this just to show yeah. that. Canadian truck but 
there are so many motorhomes around here and it definitely stands out in a sea of of the motorhomes yeah yeah it sure does there's a there's our canada it cool too in, in, that's it yeah in uh, scotland a lot of people have relatives or friends that have moved to canada or vice versa and so um there was always somebody like my brother lives in canada or i've been to canada or my son has moved to canada and married a canadian woman and so Great. everybody had a story to tell there which was cool Every loves canada everybody loves canada but canada is a really big place like that doesn't matter in canada in canada that doesn't yeah. narrow it down which is one of my <laughs> yeah. favorite it's... movie quotes of all time is from the movie canadian big where they're like canada has amassed 90 percent of their population along our northern border yeah because it's the least cold part guys like it's not like it's <laughs> of course they do yeah that's true <laughs> yeah that's true oh it is nice being in spain where there are more toyotas around because we were in the land of land rovers for so long which was like, fun was, also but we got him we, we were yeah. able to like get our foot in the or ashley at least was able to get the, her foot in the door in the land rover community mm -hmm. invited out and do some stuff with them that's cool i mean it's it's shared it's a community you know like mm. Yeah, it's it's as funny <laughs> as it is friends. when people talk shit, you know, make to make like the Jeep guys hit Toyota guys and all that stuff. Like ultimately, everybody's in it for the same thing. And oh, my God, the Tundra looks so much bigger than that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Defender. Oh, my God. That's so funny. It's, it's just because we're parked closer to the camera. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make that out. On my yeah, screen. it's it's funny because your word I'm, for it. I am constantly just like, oh, the trucks, the camper's too big or the truck's too big or whatever. But you know what? Every single night we spend with friends, everybody's in the camper and mm -hmm. eating and drinking. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Like having, you know, having a place that people can come to. And because that's what happened to us when we were in our red truck in South America. In and the rooftop tent. Yeah, and the rooftop mm. 10 people would invite us over into their camper for dinner or drinks or whatever. And now we can have people over it. Yeah. It's so great. <laughs> and you've, you've eclipsed that point of experience where you're not, you know, attending the parties, you're hosting the parties. Yeah, so it's been it's, it's been good. And then if we spend enough time with people, they just start coming in without asking. And it's great. <laughs> they're, they're like, hey, by the way, it, they're like, it's cold outside. I'm coming in. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> Come on you're, in. You're technically right. entering my house, but yes, come on in. Like, yeah, yeah. We we have some it's neighbors really... like that. I understand when kids just walk in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm leave so that good. one alone. <laughs> it, it'll happen, yeah. Ross. Just so, uh, she's got to get older. Yeah. <laughs> um. Fa yeah. Fair enough. So, this is the Spain portion of your trip. Is a, a section of this trip. So where without you know spoiling anything or scooping yeah. yourselves where where's on the the list of places to check off on this adventure yeah uh, okay so we can only be in europe ish so there's a, a collection of company countries <laughs> companies a collection of countries, countries within the european <laughs> union that are part of the schengen agreement and we can only spend 90 days out of uh, 180 days in schengen okay so in the schengen countries yeah which includes all Pretty of the countries no in, not all but a lot of them a lot of the countries are you getting place. sent to like yeah. estonia so, just to buy time <laughs> we're gonna go down to morocco okay. is the first one <laughs> okay but yes it, so that's that's essentially it is we're gonna head yep is it like you have to just leave and you can come back in or you got to no. stay your allocated it's days. You can only be in 90 days out of 180 days. So, so however you want to use you them, them up. you okay. can do it. So I think we'll just bulk time mm -hmm. instead of like two weeks in two weeks out, whatever it's too confusing and blah, blah, blah. So we'll just do our two and a half months or whatever here and yeah. then have that buffer just in case and then head into Morocco mm -hmm. and then see how far south we end up going. I don't know. Yeah. Not sure. See what is happens. there a, yeah, probably oh, not. I was going to say, is there like a cheat code? Like Luxembourg doesn't count. So you could just pop in there for a little bit. Like, yeah. 
there are all there you can or at least for for us there's some reciprocal agreements that some countries have with Canada like I know Spain you're saying that Spain has a digital nomad visa so if, if you make enough yeah. money okay. uh, remotely you can stay you can apply Longer. to stay in Spain for an extra three months hmm. um, that's as different. long as you stay in Spain that's different than the rest the reciprocal agreement okay so if you're Canadian you can apply to have an extra three months in Spain. Mm. Okay. Yeah. On top of the time you've spent there already, I believe. And then the no- digital nomad visa is different, but yeah. Mm. Extra paperwork. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. We're going home this Christmas because Ashley needs to get her uh, driver's license renewed and they uh, won't, you can't, we have to actually go in person. You can't do that from afar. And, like, hey, we're in Europe now. Can you just yeah. go ahead and renew it? Yeah. We're like, just use that same photo. They're like, mm, I don't know. It's not a so. thing. So. Yeah. We got some, we're like, okay, let's go home and visit family and then, you know, do some paperwork and get a driver's license renewed and get international driving permits renewed because they only last a year. And yeah, go to the dentist and go to the dentist. Do some eye doc. All of that fun Canadian healthcare that we all dream about down here. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, We don't, we still have to pay for the dentist. Still, like, it can't be nearly what I'm paying. I don't know. I remember when I had a real job and uh, and I had benefits that covered it. Memories. Yeah, that was good. Good times. What's that like? <laughs> it was great. I didn't know that. I didn't know how good it was at the time, to be honest. Right. Oh. It was great. Could, yeah. So yeah. Could host Mer- a seminar on fucked up healthcare. <laughs> Our, our our running joke lately has been if Canada would just buy one of the Caribbean islands and just get, install all of the stuff down there, we just move there. Because I feel like I'll Canada like would handle I'll hurricanes better than everyone else, and then we just deal with although, normal healthcare from Canada. Then, like, you can get on board with that. Although, with with the way climate change is going, there is a chance in our lifetimes that we just go to Canada Toronto. And, <laughs> it's part of South, and it'll be tropic. It'll be tropically warm. Yep. Hey, I've seen the day after tomorrow. I know what can happen. And then we saw New York, what, like three weeks ago, look like the day after that's, tomorrow? Like, <laughs> oh, God. The flooding yeah, they they had. Had. Yeah. Eight point eight, eight, eight inches crazy. of rain over wow. like four or five hours or something. It was crazy. And I got that here in Connecticut, too, but because that's, you know, not New York. Nobody talks about it. And meanwhile, I'm like, uh, snorkels? Does anybody consider snorkels for the streets around here? Does the Lexus like, have a snorkel? Negative. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't remember a snorkel. I felt like I just looked at pictures. No, of I, I I drove the Alpina XB7 through it, which was <laughs> a joy. <laughs> like a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Filed under not my car. <laughs> How do you explain that one to Alpina? Um, Sorry, guys. So it got flooded. Oh, I didn't have to. Okay. Honestly, it did great. It did great. So let's um let's take this not my car tangent and run with it. How was your trip to Iceland? And yeah, why don't you tell us about that? Tell us about that whole yeah. thing because I think a lot of people have only like seen the YouTubes and probably mm. want to hear. Mm. And I think the best thing about well, I feel like I'm never <laughs> in those shows because I'm always behind the camera. You were in this one. <laughs> you were in this one. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. Um, okay. So this was last September, wasn't it? Mm, July a and August. A little more than a year ago that we were in uh, Iceland. And so Richard did um, the first section of the Nordic series. And then I joined in the, for the Iceland portion of the uh, X Overland series. And it was really fun coming in uh towards the end so i was in the last three weeks and iceland was definitely like a different it felt like a different trip i wasn't there on the first one but it felt like a different trip just generally yeah um yeah wow iceland really blew my mind and uh that was the first trip that i got put into the navigator and planning role um, which i loved i loved it i got to do so much research before I left and pick out all these spots and talked with uh, Torvi who owns that Hilux there um, ahead of time. And man, yeah, 
just it's one of my favorite places I think we've ever been to just everything about it I just loved and yeah it felt wild it felt really wild and raw and n- new and old and people were nice food was interesting like in a good way and yeah. everything had geothermal heating so it's like warm floors and mm-hmm. Yeah, hot springs, like what's not to love, you know? Yep. Um, and the weather was pretty good while we were there, too, weather which we great. got really, I think, lucky. Um, yeah, and those river crossings. So I did lots of driving, too, and cooking. And yeah, I don't know what else. So, yeah, just to Fun. set the stage, this was the Expedition Overland. What was it? What was the, the Nordic? The Nordic series? series? Yeah. So, collection of. Toyota 4x4s and, and the XO crew and the two of you and uh, plus this guy Torvi in uh, in Iceland. And so the question I wanted to ask was, A, did Iceland and the adventures that you had planned live up to your own expectations? And B, do you feel like you left stuff on the table? <laughs> Ooh, always. Yeah. So first question, yes. So planning it, I was extremely excited and I loved planning it. And then actually most of the things, if not all the things that I saw on the internet or whatever, and we got there in real life, it was better. Like the scenery was better. It felt better. It looked better. Um, Yeah, it was every single day was just different landscapes and different things happening and beautiful scenery. And it definitely was was higher than my expectations uh for sure which was which was awesome some of the camps yeah some of the camps that we stayed at like there was some fuzzy picture on the internet or something i'm like i think this looks good we should probably stay here and then we like crest a hill and i'm like oh my goodness it was so stunning so yeah that uh definitely yeah And then, yes, we left stuff on the table for sure. We didn't cover the western part of the country hardly at all, like the fjords over there on that side. Um, And we had a lot of the the F roads. The second center. The center, but we still left a lot. Mm -hmm. And we have not spent any time there in the winter yet. Yeah. Different. There's a reason. Yeah. Yeah. But that's good to hear. I'd love to go back. The thing that's super cool about the way they build their trucks is they build them a for the the F roads, the mountain roads, but B that and like they're very res- they have restrictions in place that you cannot drive off road because mm-hmm. you know you drive off road and those tracks stay there for decades. Yeah, kills the but, habitat and yeah, yeah, all the rest of it. But when there's enough snow cover on the ground, you can drive wherever you want because you're not disturbing that habitat anymore. Mm-hmm. So everybody runs between 40s and 46s on whatever they have and air down to a couple pounds and you can drive on the glacier you can drive wherever you want safely. essentially <laughs> safely and don't make us yeah, rescue I'll, you and you're good yeah so i don't know sounds like there's a lot to be a lot of fun to be had out there that's for sure the, the tundra oh would look pretty cool on 42s yeah they they we went to, we went to arctic trucks and there was a tundra on 44s and i was like yeah this is pretty cool but. just like I, I yeah the the maintenance that would have to go on to deal with that is hurting yeah. my soul but I, i'm surprised that they're able to they live they're they're may they're able to make these trucks live like f150s on 46s yeah. and but you know mm-hmm. I think it's just driving style and and knowledge the train. and diligent maintenance yep. versus dude down in Texas puts you know fifty on his F one fifty changes the oil every twelve thousand miles it's like why's my engine messed up like yeah well, there's yeah, this thing so. called taking care of it <laughs> <You know? laughs> um. yeah and I've never been anywhere where. They have such expensive fuel, and yet they have oh, the yeah. tires are so large at the same time. Right, right. Like, yeah. like, like I think gas, like wow. regular gas, was ten or eleven bucks a gallon when we were there, Whoa. and and everybody's running around town on on forty fours, right, forties. 
Yeah, I think I'd love to go back, but I think that's one of the things that's challenging is it's expensive to get your vehicle there. It's expensive mm -hmm. to rent a vehicle there. Next, you know, fuel's expensive. Groceries are expensive. I think you can do it sort of on a budget, but it's not an inexpensive destination. So yeah, yeah. Um, it was really nice to be yeah. invited on that trip because yeah, I don't got, know that we would go. Yeah. we wouldn't have been able to go. I don't think not in the short term. Yeah. So yeah, real pleasure. How was that trip? It was great. Yeah, it was great. It, it was. It's always fun when I get to go do work I like to do, get paid well for it, and then tell a fun story while seeing, you know, a bunch of landscape that I would never have seen before, or eat food I would never have been able to eat, and mm -hmm. yeah, experience new things. And yeah, be a part of a group. We talked about that too this year. Yeah, is we're always it's the two of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the group such dynamic is totally different when you have a crew all working towards a goal and we're always around each other for weeks and weeks on end. And it's just, we do a lot of things that we wouldn't normally take the time to do, like build a fire and, you know, things like that, right, that as a right. couple we should do because it's nice, but we just don't. It's more complex, but at the same time, it's worth the complexity. rewarding yeah yeah it, it, the work makes it worth it because having more people in your group is more work i mean i've i've off-roaded with two people and i've off-roaded in a group of like 16 trucks it's like oh my Oof. god this is terrible but at the end of the day it's like all these people saw the same thing do the same thing there's this you know this like wholesome emotion behind everything and mm. it sounds like you got that a little bit too because you uh attended this africa trip as well how did yeah. that come to be uh well <laughs> so ash planned the iceland portion of the nordic series and with wonderful help <laughs> yes from all of the people that you talk to and yeah yeah it's not just me that's for sure yeah lots of people and i think i think as soon it. as you did that you showed clay that you understand what the point of the trip is and the point mm -hmm. of the trip is to film a series mm -hmm. not to go and see whatever if it's not or go up this mountain if it's actually not going to be scenic or not mm -hmm. to go here because it's going to be fun you have to go here because it's fun and it's going to help tell a story and once you proved that you understood the the concept of what needed to be done i think and like Clay was like, yeah, you're coming, coming to Africa with us mm. and the whole trip. So whole trip. And that, re that was whole a whole beast. That was two months. Yeah. Eight weeks. And, uh, there were eight of us. So it was Clay, Clay Cross. I was say all Rochelle the boys were there, right? Yeah. And their three kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, Bai's the eldest and he's eight. I know, I know they have two with 18. driver's permit. Sorry. That's how I do my and math. <laughs> he's driving. Yeah. Right. He's of driving. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, water's 15. And Where are my kids in relation to this? Right. <laughs> Eli's 13. And then we had um, Peter Van Stralen was there as yeah. well. He was on the Iceland trip as well. Yep. Yeah, and, and he's 21. Yep. And then for the first half, we had Dr. John Solberg. Who has been on previous episodes? It was really nice to have a doctor there and a, take some pressure off. Having Doctor John there was great, and then he flew out, and then another person flew in that we cannot say <laughs> for the second half. That's correct. This um, is name. <laughs> say you can guess, we'll and they'll just sit line. straight faced. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <There's, laughs> Does he have something to do with land cruise? <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't Kurt. Oh, I am completely wrong then. Because Kurt, like Kurt was at the at the launch of the new land cruiser. Yes, so, right. yes. I was yeah. messaging Kurt that week, and he was like, "Dude, I'm a little busy now." I was like, "Oh shit!" Like you're, I didn't realize they were hosting the unveiling. Yeah. Ooh, oopsies. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, I should message. Sure, him. he's yeah. still busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think he slows down. He only gets busier. Uh, he's, he's off. Yeah, that dude. Did I forget anybody? 
Uh, no, I think that I was think it. That was it. Yeah, so it was it was great. And then thankfully, I keep getting uh, invited back to hold a camera of some sort. So I got mm-hmm. to be yeah lead photographer for, for the trip, and then yeah, also shot all so half the, great half the film. So cool. We were very busy. Yeah. And also, I'm also data management, so backing up all the data every day. Yeah. Now, Ooh. when I start saying how and many I, and terabytes camera did you stuff with, and yeah. Uh, okay. Five, six, oh my one, gosh. Twenty eight. I think so many. Jesus. That's so yeah. Many. It is so many. <laughs> every night, I'm just like type, 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 <laughs> copy, copy. And oh it's a lot. God. Usually, so you didn't have to make dinner. Half a terabyte a day. <laughs> I did not. I barely had time to eat dinner, but thankfully somebody else actually made dinner a lot. Yeah, Rochelle and I, with some help. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, those trips are. A lot. They're a lot. It's it's, it's lot. really fun being able to just drill down and just have a couple of roles within a team because mm-hmm. normally we are Do the two of us split all of the roles here and it's pretty fun just to have one or two roles that we have to focus on yeah turns into so, the team that is no of doing everything i'm else. gonna i'm gonna redirect you off sorry so so like yeah, because it is just the two of you and more often than not you're out in the middle of nowhere do you plan meals how, how far ahead do you plan meals okay like two or three days maybe yeah because we haven't been in a situation yet where we've been out for a really long time away from grocery stores yet have we no i think like on that northwest coast of scotland we were kind of just away from we were out there for a while actually yeah and then maybe after two or three days we start just putting together whatever we have yeah um but i think once we get into uh morocco and some of the longer stretches will maybe have to, I don't know. We'll yeah. see how I, that I feel like goes. we get a good five or six days of good fresh food. We have a 55 liter fridge. So I think, I feel like we get a good five, six days of good fresh food. And then we start cobbling things together with whatever is left. And But the food culture yeah. in Spain is like a whole amazing thing. Yeah. So we Go haven't been want, in want of anything. So uh, yeah, we went up for coffee, like or we went for breakfast the other day. We each had a cappuccino or a cafe con leche. Um, we had fresh squeezed orange juice and we had toast with jam and butter. And we had maybe a second coffee. And so, maybe. and, That's and it was know. eight euros or eight euros 50. So Which is, eight at the U S more or less. Okay. And that's effectively a full meal for two people for eight bucks. Yeah. Which is a, Single Starbucks in New or York here in Kansas, you can yeah, still totally. get exactly. <laughs> so that yeah, the the price don't change. Is it really? Oh. Yeah, especially if it's oat, here's your oat milk. Especially coffee, if you add a third so... shot and a flavor, yeah, you're eight bucks <laughs> pretty quick. Mm, delicious. Yeah. You speak from experience. I hope not. That's disgusting. That might be my regular order. <laughs> And when and when you have a reward <laughs> star, oh you add the fourth God. shot. Because <laughs> it's free. God yeah, the free. Really? Because it's free. That's how I get back yeah. to normal. Yeah. Intestinal. Oh, the first day. In, that's intestinal masochism. You need to. Do you know how much energy is around <laughs> me and how that's, little energy that's... I have? That is how I can keep up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You that's make how. A valid point. To be honest, that's kind of how I felt on, <laughs> on the Africa trip. Really? Yeah, so much energy around me. Just like just depleting from my body. Uh, so it was, yeah, I turned, it was yeah. Namibia? Botswana was and South Botswana? Africa. Okay. How were yeah. the border crossings? Were they? Okay. Fine. Very, very easy. Really? Yeah. We had, uh, we had carnets for the trucks because need to, you need a carnet to get into uh, South Africa. Uh-huh. If you're shipping. Yep. If you're shipping. So... Uh, it made it very easy when you go through a border crossing. Then it's like stamp it and fill it out. You just have thing. to double check that it's filled out correctly, which it wasn't always. Uh, but otherwise, it was. Was it cold yeah, it was while easy. you guys were down there? Super easy. Cool. Yeah, it was sick because it was the came... reverse, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was their winter. 
Uh, we it snowed in Johannesburg, which is couple, nuts to think about it snowing left, think. in yeah. Africa. But yeah. Oh wow. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we had, but a few times when it dipped to freezing, and then a lot of okay. the time it hovered like mid eighties. Thank say. you. Thank you for translating. For us. speak. <laughs> <laughs> Johannesburg, for those Canadians listeners, are good at is at fifty seven hundred feet, which yeah, it's high. That'll make snow that much more like that less unlikely. <laughs> Something like. <laughs> it's like Denver. Yeah. It was Isn't creepy. That the Denver? Like coming into Joburg and then doing the route and then coming back to Joburg and the temperature was warmer and we're like, we just left here, but it had been mm-hmm. eight weeks and just coming back in again was weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's pretty we're cool. like, it's warmer now here. Weird. Like quite a bit warmer. Yeah. So it shows you like the passage of time is so weird there when you yeah, are out on the road. Especially when the eight weeks just flies by. Yeah. As it does yeah. on uh, time. There's a different relationship with time when you're on any trip away from your, not necessarily permanent, but for the two of you, your most frequent dwelling. <laughs> yeah. You know, and interesting to hear that that is uh, the same when, when traveling very much. Yeah, you lose track of you're like how long has it been since i had a shower or done laundry and it's always longer or groceries it's always longer than we think it is we're like why don't we have any food left and it's like well it's actually been swing by the store (laughs) is weird is there when you're on the road like that is there Aside from in certain vicinities, traffic and events and whatnot, is there any like differentiation between weekends and weekdays? <laughs> All kind of meshes together. No. <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah, we'll flip them around. So, like during the week, if we need to do something, then I will take the day off. This is this is for like us. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, us, okay. I'll take the day off, but then I'll week work on a Sunday or something. It's yeah, just all, especially over the place. if we're somewhere that's popular yeah. and we can beat the crowds by not being there on a weekend. We'll just work yeah. during the week. That's all. all that's a pro tip, day. regardless of where you're going. Yeah, go in the but morning on, the, on a weekday. Yep. Yeah. But it also sometimes will will get tripped up because we sometimes are like we should actually take a weekend, um, because some days we'll I'll be like working every single day. Yeah. And then I'm like, I should probably take like a day off. Yeah, we but. we do a pretty, I think we do a decent job of splitting the hours equally <laughs> throughout all seven days of the week. Yeah, but that's all that matters. Day, yeah. like, we were able to go for yeah. a hike as long morning, as the work then gets done. Just do work and you guys aren't losing your mind. So we're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And through the power of Star uh, Starlink. We can talk to you and we can do work whenever. And, it doesn't matter where and we you are. you made the comment, like, it's you really beautiful. have had pretty reliable yeah. connections the whole time you've been there. That's so wild. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Probably have yeah, more right. reliable, better connections than I have in my house with Optimum. What a friggin' nightmare. <laughs> this stupid Sorry. internet is. I'm not Such joking. It's like four times a day, it either slows down or just quits. I'm like, Come, come hang out in the Midwest month. with our Google Fiber, what? dude. <laughs> Ooh. Magic. Yeah. My wife is going to love that proposition. I'm going well, to the Midwest. When you show her the size of house, you can then purchase as well. <laughs> yes, it will change some things. <laughs> oh, Chris. We, we have talked about this. This horse has been... Right, but it's always time. funny to me. You know that. You know that. Fun to you, and it's funny to your wife. We're well aware of your situation. Where I am, so. Uh, Anyways. um, No, I like this off topic. Stay on topic. (laughs) Uh, No, I I don't. I don't. Um, Can you, or do you want to reveal any of your, like, like snapshot highlights of Mm. your 
trip thus far, the one you're on, or the Africa trip. I don't know if you have, you know, disclosures you have to obey or anything, but. Mm. Yeah, I feel like general things are good. Yeah, I for Africa. But... So for Africa, I'll just say that <laughs> eight weeks it was a blur. A blur. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, when you you just work caffeinated big... eight week blur. Yeah, you w- yep. you wake up at seven in the morning. You work all day and you run around. You see a whole bunch of stuff. And I mostly just saw stuff through a camera lens or through a monitor, and then. I'm offloading photos until 11 o'clock at night and then I go to sleep and and video and then go to sleep and And at some point, like the energy level is just enough to keep me alive and get me to like do my tasks every day and just things come in and they just like sit here and they're, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was a great trip and it was so fun to do it as a big group. Mm -hmm. And we had people come in like a couple, uh, people from South Africa join us as well with, with their own trucks and actually teach us some things about their culture. And okay, that's pretty cool. As opposed to just like assuming things from our eyes. So it was really nice. That was awesome. That was, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a really fun part about the trip. Um, and just the wildlife component was so different. Just having to be on your toes all the time, kind of like in camp at night, for example, always like looking with a flashlight in the bushes to make sure really? there's not something out there. Yeah, always hearing you hearing or... the hippos Something's and the hyenas. Something's always watching. It's just whether it's deciding to do something about it. Right. Yeah. So I that's like that. another level of heightened awareness that we mm. kind of had to have that we weren't necessarily yeah. black, used black to. Black bears are one thing. Yeah. Brown to that bears extent, are another thing. Let's say. African yeah. wildlife is an entirely yeah. different thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and and we had come from months in Scotland where the <laughs> biggest mammal that might do something to you is a badger, and not a honey badger, like a badger. No, it's a so, human. Let's be real. Yeah, human. I was thinking that too, actually. Yeah. But, but yeah, we went for months without worrying about anything, mm-hmm. and then all cool. of a sudden, like, okay, we get malaria, <laughs> we get attacked by a lion. Cool. Yeah. Well, it like matter the ants are biters <laughs> down there. Like that's be vigilant is the yeah. That's where it gets me. Action. Like. Uh, but yeah but generally it was great didn't have to nobody got attacked i think he was asking about I, highlights. We'll oh, highlights. definitely put that in the program uh, I think. I mean, nobody a- getting attacked <laughs> is a highlight yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and i think for our trip i think one of the one thing i wasn't expecting like here in in well not here but when we were in the uk um ashley has this project oh yeah called finding barbara toy and i think you should like ex- Maybe you mm-hmm. want to tell tell everybody about this. Yeah, give us the elevator pitch on that one. It's mm-hmm. super cool, and at first I'm like, I care a little bit because it's interesting. But then, as we're doing, as we're like going to the Library of Scotland and finding these documents, and as you're driving her, like, uh, series yeah. Land Rover that she drove around the world, I'm like, this is the coolest thing. It's just like such a fun yeah. project. Yeah, so elevator pitch. I can't remember if I was talking to you guys about this last time we spoke, um, but whatever. Uh, Yeah, so there's this woman named Barbara Toy, and she drove her Series 1 Land Rover around the world. And multiple, well, she had a couple of Land Rovers, but she circumnavigated the globe a couple of times and did a bunch of uh, travels and wrote eight books. And she started traveling on her own um in land rovers in like the 50s and 60s and 70s and when she started when she was 40 i think yeah and so apparently the story goes she was in a pub in i guess it was probably i think london and with a group of friends and a bet was made and you know uh, a little while later she had a demonstration model land rover that she took to afghanistan um and that was like the the start of this whole travel bug for her um and writing and taking photos and everything crazy so i initially found out about her during covid when i was investigating a lot of uh women's historical overland stories which i still am doing um, for for overland journal and expedition portal <laughs> so um yeah but hers has been the most- you gotta make sure because <laughs> I know, I these can't. are stories that that people thought that our audience are if not familiar with, then should be, and that 
they're like important historical things to hear and you know they're great stories so they're amazing like things were so hard way harder back then and those are they've all been become kind of my idols i think um yeah anyway so Barbara Toy, I was particularly intrigued with her story because she had written these eight books, but like you couldn't really buy them other than really expensive uh, used copies online. Mm -hmm. So none of them were in print. And I was like, how is it that there was this woman traveling the globe on her own in a Land Rover? She wrote eight books and, you know, had this relationship with Land Rover and was in the Royal Geographical Society and nobody's talking about her except for super, super, super niche Land Rover Series 1 fans. Mm -hmm. And none of her books are available to read unless you want to spend a bunch of money. What? Like hundreds of pounds. Up to on, a thousand. Yeah, up to a thousand pounds on the original uh, books that she had written. That's and crazy. none of them, you can't get them at, like in um, electronic copies. And hmm. anyways, so this Finding Barbara Toy project was kind of born out of that in that I wanted to, first of all, collect all the copies of her books if I could find them. And then um, originals would be preferred. And then the second part of the project was to try to get the books back into print so people can actually buy them and actually read her stories. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's kind of a long story um but in the uk i just kept going to bookshops and i thought let's do this the old-fashioned way and go on foot and i actually ended up finding two uh original originals copies yeah and one uh reprint but still in pretty good shape uh so that was very exciting and to see the books in person and to be in the actual place where you could actually buy them and like the i don't know it's like an old school kind of quest that's kind of fun you're not just like ordering off are, the internet for hundreds and hundreds of dollars um are those the books so that yeah. were alluded to earlier sorry to interrupt you is this the no is this the book collection that was alluded to earlier on that they're living yes. with you and they have to make their way back home yeah yep. yeah yep yeah, so that and those and some other books that I was like, ah, I found some books that I probably couldn't get in Canada, like Ella Maylart, who was a Swiss uh, overland traveler and journalist, and uh, Freya Stark, and who else is in there? Uh, do you want Antonia's books in there? That oh yeah, Antonia Balling Kent, uh, who's She's like a modern writer Lois's? and Lois Price's book. And yeah, anyways, I've been collecting a bunch of them. But speaking of Lois. Okay, yeah. so. <laughs> I, there's like, so it's a long story, but there's a guy named Greg Fitzgerald and he's a Land Rover enthusiast and he writes all about Land Rovers. And he found me on Instagram and we worked together to try to get one of Barbara Toy's books reprinted. And awesome. so fast forward to, I think it was April. And I think just as we like touched down in London and I turned my phone on and I got the news that uh, John Mar Marie Publishing, which actually published her original books, was game to uh, reprint In that's, Search of Shiba. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. And so um, how this came about was I had reached out to Lois about a copyright lawyer in the UK because I didn't know what the rules are about reprinting books like this. Mm -hmm. And she ended up hooking me up with um, another author named Nick. And uh, he actually was in charge of this historical series with John Murray Publishing and he was like, yeah, let's do this. And he was really um, stoked about the concept of getting her book back in print. So, That's so cool. yay. So now people can actually buy it. And I'll give you the link um, if anybody is interested, any listeners are interested in <laughs> buying a copy of Barbatoy's book. Um, I'll 
fire it over to you guys. Um, so the more people that are interested, the more likely that some of the other books will be um, able to be reprinted, I imagine, as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then I ended up going to Barbara Toy's... Um, it or wasn't really her hometown, but she spent a lot of time in Chipping Norton in the UK and walked by her old house and did stalkery things like that. But uh, <laughs> um, through the power of Instagram, which is proving to be very helpful on my quest, I uh, got hooked up with the current owner of Pollyanna, which is uh, Barbara's first. Uh, first Land Rover that she took on uh, the first few trips that she did. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Land Rover's name is Pollyanna and it still runs. And so, uh, Tom Pickford is the man who owns Pollyanna and he was very generous and kind and invited me over to check out Pollyanna and even let me behind the wheel. So I got to like sit in this vehicle that this woman drove from all these trips and it was a weird Surreal. surreal moment yeah. so i haven't posted about it yet on instagram but yeah that's that awesome. uh that's so cool um i will be soon so i'll put some photos and stuff up about it but that was pretty exciting yeah yeah there's a whole bunch of other details about all of that that i need to get down somewhere um like yeah i guess she she sent the vehicle there after land rover shut down their um service department in the was it in 90s or 80s yeah, or something at Sully, Sully Hall and so Land Rover recommended uh, that she contact a local Land Rover mechanic which was Tom who currently owns Land Rover his dad what and so Tom <laughs> actually learned to drive on Pollyanna like in Pollyanna oh very cool and, <laughs> yeah and he he like met her before she passed away in uh, 2001 I think it was and so it was very amazing and weird and surreal to be there with him chatting about her and yeah. And then the Scottish library, sorry, I'm like going on and on, um, was just going through the files that the publisher owned um, for each book. So it was like files for each book that have been archived in the Scottish library. And in those files are letters between Barbara Toy and her principal contact. And they're all like handwritten and had like embossment from like hotels all over the world where she oh was and her signature and like her real thoughts on everything. And uh, so that was one of the coolest moments I think I've had so far was being in Scotland at an archive getting a special card and then like seeing these letters that she had actually handwritten from all over the world um that was like oh this is actually That's barbara awesome. you know this is like a book she's written this is her herself so yeah it's fun reading yeah. we started reading them very like very slowly and then all of a sudden the the library was starting to close we're like okay take pictures of everything yeah, this is like hundreds right. and hundreds of but but there are letters when she's writing back to John Murray and she's like, oh, did you send my films to, to uh, Sir David Attenborough and did he like them? Oh my and God. It, and back, it's like, well, David Attenborough, he he said he didn't really see the story or the films weren't good enough. And she's like, oh, OK. <laughs> and but Poor it's so stalker. neat to see these letters back and forth. And, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, full on stalker mode. But it's been such a fun ride. I'm. I'm always like, Barbara, where is she sending me today? Like, it's always an adventure mm -hmm. on the next quest for whatever. It's like um, the scavenger hunt of scavenger hunts. Did you have your own version of the National Treasure slash Uncharted history. slash all that stuff? Like, it's, yeah. yeah. You get your yep. own quest. That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There... Yeah. You deserve good time. a sense of accomplishment on that one if uh, if you haven't. Because sometimes you do these big things and you don't give yourself time to actually like appreciate it and flex. That's what Morocco's for. Try to, I have not plenty of time that. down there. Try to do that. Because <laughs> this is it's going to be rocky really and awesome. dusty. Like, you know what you're getting into. Thank yeah. you. That's one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 90 days. Yeah. 
that didn't feel long at all. Yeah. So. So good. Thanks yeah, for listening to my long. That was a really good story. <laughs> story. Yeah. It, seriously, we're here Are for we? that. <laughs> That's what our show's about. <laughs> everybody wants to hear it long form in some way or another now yeah i almost need um like on the overland journal podcast to just do one episode on barbara toy and the whole thing and there's also um a woman that lives in chipping norton and she has uh she has uh huh. a lot of barbara toys um belongings that hmm. were given to her so like tons of photographs and dresses and maps oh, that's awesome. and film film hmm. and she's in the midst of writing her biography so i'm very excited to read that that could be when that comes out an overland journal special mm. starting yeah. i'd uh, listen to that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just an idea it's fun yeah. Same, same. <laughs> I know. Another, another uh, addition to the world of podcast. Well, sweet. So, I'm gonna wrap up the show real fast. Does become. Um, so because that, my, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, and and my person who was supposedly yeah. taking her nap is now in the room with me. So that's why I, I can like, listen oh, to those I, stories all day. I'm I don't know about my time. And I was like, oh, there's the rest of the day. <laughs> but I, um, give me one second. You want to say hi? Oh. Let me say hi. No, you don't want to come. You got to come over here to say hi. I'm gonna say hi to Richard and Ashley. Say hi. You're just gonna. We do have nap hair involved, so no. we'll, we'll warn you now. It's definitely nap hair. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's nap hair. Okay. Care. Can you let me finish this? I always fast? have nap hair. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Chris is like, uh, well, nap time's over. I must play. <laughs> you know, it's worked hours. Oh man. So, uh, what is on the immediate docket other than Morocco? Anything you want to just uh, tease? Hmm. So mostly Spain. Yeah, there's a lot to see here. So we'll have to maximize our time. I still, I'm not sure which way we're going. Even tomorrow, we haven't really the decided food. yet. It's east or west. So, yeah. Follow the like, point. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but yeah. We're... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. east, maybe. Yeah, the weather's supposed to be bad in the west. So we're like, eh. yeah. And then, yeah, we are filming everything. Well, not everything, but a lot of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Four episodes in to a series that's going to go on the X Overland Network. Nice. So they have a bunch of different creators that are doing stuff. So. Uh, we're filming a series yeah. for Norris filming a series dirt uh, gone dirt and filming a series mm -hmm. uh, cooking and food hmm. um, and then so roam good. over landing and then we will roam so there are at least five or six of us who are filming different series that will probably go live in early 2024 around the same time as the I'm I'm guessing that I actually don't know uh, around the same time as the Africa I, that's series literally goes, goes live. Wow, that's literally all I can so do. Man, he's so fast with the keyboard. <laughs> Amazing. He's a wizard. He's a production wizard. Yeah. I don't I don't believe you. You're, well, you're a master of that. We'll give you that. That's cool though. Yeah, XO has uh, has begun to really spread its wings and yes. excited to see what comes in. In the, yeah, they um, have coming months uh, and years. Yeah, they have a lot going on right now. It's I'll wrap it up real fast. Mm -hmm. You can rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. You can yeah. like and subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, you can follow uh, Richard and Ashley. It's at Dust to Glory, and then Ashley is at Dust to Glory underscore Ash, and then. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I didn't know that one. Is that what its own Instagram? Yeah, and at Finding Barbara Toy. Oh, sorry if you're going to say that. <laughs> Was that part of one of those posts? Yeah. yeah. You just had it up on the screen. <laughs> oh, I got to go back and figure that out now. I'll, I'll dig into that. <laughs> uh, maybe a collaborative post. Yeah, it was a collab. Oh, I found it. I'm going to follow it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like seeing that stuff. <laughs> um, there. Yay. Thank you. Thank you.